it is constantly in step with progress, our Navy still observes the old and glorious traditions of the sea, handed down by the brave and hardy seafaring men who fought to obtain and maintain our democracy. In memory of the cause for which these men lived and died, a modern man of war pauses for a brief time, and in a traditional manner, the ship is dressed from stem to stern with flags as a salute to the symbol of liberty which all true Americans love and cherish. And having paused, she once again puts to sea to take her place as a unit of the United States fleet headed southward to equatorial waters. After a journey of days, the fleet approaches the boundaries of the domain of Neptunus Rex. Though the weather is tropical, pollywogs in heavy winter clothing and using boxing gloves for mittens are detailed to keep a sharp lookout for Davy Jones, the Royal Emissary. Shellback search the ship, rounding up all rebellious pollywogs, for these rebels must be thoroughly subdued and taught to show due respect to His Majesty King Neptune when he arrives on the morrow. It looks as though the shellbacks have a tough job on their hands, but the methods are effective. Before the long day ends, the pollywogs will be too weary and worn to offer further trouble. At dusk, the lookouts report that Davy Jones is approaching the ship and the welcoming committee of shellbacks assembles. Davy Jones, with his royal retinue of deputies, boards the ship, and the subdued pollywogs and landlubbers are held in readiness by the shellbacks for his royal pleasure. A few of the pollywogs are still unruly and must be handcuffed. The captain of the ship greets and welcomes Davy Jones with his retainers, deputies of His Majesty King Neptune. Davy Jones reads a proclamation from His Majesty stating that all pollywogs and landlubbers must be initiated into the mysteries of the deep before the end of another day. His deputies take their stations and from well-filled bags produce royal subpoenas to issue to all pollywogs and landlubbers. These subpoenas carry royal orders to appear before His Majesty King Neptune for initiation when he boards the ship in the morning. Dawn breaks. The great day is at hand. Shellbacks are exuberant with expectation, the pollywogs apprehensive with misgivings. His Majesty King Neptune, ruler of the deep, who recognizes no rank among pollywogs, arrives on board to receive a salute from pollywog junior officers. His royal retinue of strange denizens of the deep leave their seaweed homes and threaten the pollywogs with leers of sadistic glee. Through guards of honor, King Neptune with his retinue proceeds to a specially constructed platform where the captain, as senior representative of the Shellbacks, bids them a hearty welcome. King Neptune receives command of the ship and immediately orders that his flag, the Jolly Roger, be hoisted as a warning to all seafaring men. The ancient ruler of the deep goes modern. With a microphone, he welcomes all shellbacks to his domain, warning each and every pollywog that he intends to be as severe as he can for their offense of entering his domain. But if during their ordeal they prove themselves to be true men of the sea, he will be glad to welcome and acknowledge them as tried and trusty shellbacks. Accompanied by the ship's band, His Majesty inspects the ship while his royal retainers prepare the infernal machines and search all nooks and corners to ascertain that no pollywogs are trying to escape the pleasure of his royal wrath. While other shellbacks look on, King Neptune complains that the presence of so many landlubbers is disagreeable and orders all pollywogs, lounge lizards, freshwater sailors, and amateur mermaid chasers to be brought before him. He mounts the throne and his royal retainers assemble. Queen Amphitrite, mistress of the sea, fairest of the sea flappers and ruler of the mermaids. The royal navigator, charter of ocean breezes, controller of sea currents and keeper of the keys to Davy Jones' locker. Royal police who search the seven seas for pollywogs. Royal doctors, originators of seasickness. The royal undertaker who views the pollywogs with malevolent satisfaction. 
royal guards who have the difficult task of protecting the queen's mermaid. The spectacle of King Neptune on his throne with his grim retainers assembled close about him is a sight pollywogs never forget. All is in readiness, and for the first time in history, a president of the United States, while in office, presents his credentials to King Neptune. The royal retainers engage in heated debate as to the manner in which so illustrious a visitor should be accepted and initiated into the mysteries of the deep. While His Royal Majesty King Neptune looks on and becomes impatient and wrathful with his royal retainers. And finally, in deference to his noted visitor, His Majesty, with royal dignity and pride, steps down from the throne and, in words that all may hear, speaks to the president of the good old days when the rumble of ship's propellers did not disturb the peace of the sea, nor submarines invade his kingdom of the deep. With venerable reminiscence, he speaks of the great figures in history whom he's met and bids a hearty welcome to the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Army and Navy and the first citizen of a mighty nation. Other members of the President's party and the pollywogs of the ship's crew present their credentials and these unfortunate pollywogs of lesser rank get the work. Many of the pollywogs lose their heads, but never in this manner, for this wicked-looking blade is only wood. The hot seat where pollywogs come in contact with the electric eel and the indicator registers their manliness. Under the tender ministrations of the royal doctors, the pollywogs on the operating table feel the caress of the electric knife, suffer the prods of probing thumbs, and receive pungent and bitter pills of cayenne pepper to warm their innards. After having been warmed up by the electric chair, the electric knife, and the hot pepper pills, the pollywogs need cooling, plenty of cooling, and do they get it? Just watch. Slapdash shaves are the order of the day. The royal barbers waste no time. In Queen Amphitrite's bath, freshwater pollywogs are baptized in brine. It looks rough, but it's all in fun and no one gets hurt. After the cooling brine, a bit of warmth is added. The ordeal is almost over. Royal fragilators, with well-placed wallops to tender stern sheets, harass the luckly pollywogs who run the gauntlet to emerge at the end as full-fledged shellbacks, who have earned the right to receive from King Neptune one of his royal certificates to be treasured for a lifetime and shown to envious pollywogs and landlubbers. Each new shellback eagerly awaits the day when he too will have the opportunity to initiate pollywogs into the mysteries of the deep. Long and memorable day over, ships of the fleet steam majestically onward into the dawn of another day, when the serious work of maintaining a mighty arm of the nation's first line of defense will be resumed. <laughs>